previously on Uncorked. Becoming a master sommelier is the top certification for wine professionals. To become a master sommelier, you have to pass the master sommelier examination. This is the most difficult test in the world. You cannot look in the mirror and say, I am a master sommelier right now. Mm -hmm. Don't come to the test. I get a little stiff, especially when I'm nervous. Oh, there's whales out there. In the last year or so, just get performance anxiety. Legiolo Rosé from Bison, a very fresh style, a good way to start the meal. Much better, much more fluid. Winner of each competition will get a trip out to the finals. Top new psalm, the winner, Morgan Harris. <laughs> On top psalm, John Ross. I do need to buy wine for Jason Group. You should do a French wine. I feel like you're not going to have a no French wine. Yeah. I had a really strong performance at Top Som Regionals, but you can't take that for granted. Top Som Nationals is coming up, and you can always use more tasting practice. I don't know if, like, natural shot is. <laughs> is the way to go. Jane and I are always kind of going back and forth in these competitions. Jane won the 11 Madison Park competition, and I won Top Som Regionals. I don't know any of these for socially producers. The Columbia all. Crows will be straightforward. It's great to have someone who's going to challenge you. What else are you doing today? Are you going back to work? Yep, back to work. But don't be so excited. Just got to ease, ease back in. Hold on. Hello. Hey, Jane. Hey. Hey, this is Jeff Crew. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good. Well, I just want to follow up with you after the top song regionals. But we crunched all the numbers from across the country, and actually, if you were in any of the other regionals, you would have won. Uh, so when we put all the numbers together, you're definitely in for the uh, wild card spot for finals in Sonoma. Awesome. Right, so it works out with your schedule. For sure. I will, I will be there. Looking forward to it. Great. Uh, that's awesome. There are four regional qualifying rounds for top song. And then the two next highest scores across the country get to go as wild card spots. And I get to go with John, and it's awesome. I'm super excited. Going to Top Song. Awesome. <laughs> There's expectations of me from the MSs, probably more than anyone else myself, that, you know, I, I show well. Did he tell you who the other wild card was? He did not. Hello? Hey, David, Jeff Cruz. Hey, how are you? Okay, we're up the finals. Uh, oh. Wild card spot. Awesome. Making the nationals of the wild card is great because it's really good prep for the exam. It's another chance to, to beat John Ross in competition. Look forward to seeing you. We'll get you all the details in the next day or two. And look forward to seeing you spell it. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, guys. Oh, no, why are you sorry? I'm so sorry. So good to see you. <laughs> Wrenching new hot things. So I didn't make it to Top Sum Nationals this year, but with the Master Sum exam just around the corner, all of my focus right now is on that exam. Right now I'm crazy busy. I opened a new restaurant with the Union Square Hospitality Group called Marta. I am taking every moment that I can to go study and you try to squeeze in family time. This is delicious. Why is it so bubbly? <laughs> it's a thing called champagne. <laughs> oh, food. So, Jack, how much wine on an average day do you consume? <laughs> Probably a bottle or so. Or so. Oh, or so. <laughs> That's crazy talk. <laughs> how are you feeling about everything? I'm definitely nervous. Just because there's so much pressure and noise in my head. I almost start shaking. Oh, really? Yeah. And trying to not focus on the fact that it's my third try. I wanted to just, like, walk in there and feel confident, you know? The Master Sommelier exam is composed of three different sections. You have three years to complete all of the sections. Otherwise, you go back to zero and start all over again. I have passed theory and service. I just have the blind tasting portion left, and this is my last try. So what do you do if you don't? I don't know, man. It's going to be really hard. But in my heart of hearts, I know that I'd probably keep going with it. It's been really tough. 
it's caused like a lot of times for him to like have to choose like that over like spending time together just because it's something that it's so important and it's only once a year and so I get it. Hopefully he will pass and this will be over. Carly and I met in high school coming from our Christian perspective and our common goal of wanting to have kids taking these couple years to study becomes a little cumbersome. You know, you, f you have no life beyond this exam. Carly wants this whole thing to be over so we can focus back on each other. A toast? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Yes. Good luck. Good luck. I need it. <laughs> Seriously, we have this thing pretty great right now. I'm okay. You know, this is my heart, the hardest part for me, but I'm still making some mistakes, but good mistakes. So I'm still having good days and bad days. The master exam is coming up in a couple of weeks, and tasting is my Achilles heel in this entire process. Pascaline's offer to proctor blind tasting. And I think a very important part of the process is to taste with masters who've passed the exam. When you touch your front glass, let's go. <sighs> Wine number one is a pale straw wine of low intensity. On the nose, green apple, yellow apple, green pear, yellow pear, honeydew melon rind. Yeah. Varietal possibilities include Pinot Grigio from Italy, Albrino from Spain, and Grano Veltliner. Fun inclusion, this is a 2013 Pinot Grigio from Alto Adige, uh, Italy. Wine number two. Right now, I'm at a point where I'm trying to let the wines come to me and not make any assumptions about them. Wine number six. This is some notes of one minute, you say? Yeah. Balsamic. The time constraints of the blind tasting exam add a decent amount of pressure. Um, Tannins are moderate plus alcohol is high. Um, 20 seconds. Final conclusion, this is a um, 1995 shot enough to pop. Done. Super great job on this one. It's 98 shot enough to pop. Yeah, it's, 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 it's rewarding to get a wine that's hard right in the end because you're just following your, you know. Your tasting is really thoughtful, really well put together. It's just too long. You spend four minutes and ten seconds on that. Oh, I shouldn't have. Because it's obviously one of two things. Let's make it 30 seconds shorter. Just because as soon as you start to describe the wine, I knew where you were going to call it. Mm -hmm. Blind tasting is the part of the exam about which I'm, without a doubt, the least confident. I feel well prepared, but when the pressure's on, it's a lot different. Topsom is one of the best ways to prepare for the master's exam. When you touch that glass, you're going to start that timer. <coughs> Gentlemen, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. This is the most difficult service situation I will probably ever be in in my entire life. In the end, there can only be one. You want to keep a wine fresh so that it shows its best expression. When wine is open for a few days, most wines will taste worse. It tends to get a little vinegary kind of note to it, kind of like what bad sherry smells like. You want to seal up that bottle of wine as much as possible. You want to prevent any air from going in. There are a few different methods. There's an argon gas you can get where you spray it in, prevents it from getting oxidized. The little pump systems work relatively well. There are those fancy Coravan systems right now that are pretty amazing. You essentially stick a needle through the cork and are able to extract the wine without pulling the cork. The way I've done it at home for 15 years is just have what you want and put cork in it and put it back in the fridge. Drink within the week and you'll probably be doing fine. is one of the best ways to prepare for the master's exam. And it's also a really good indicator of who's going to pass. If you look at who wins these competitions, they usually fairly quickly go on to become master sommeliers. Top Tom, which John and Dana are competing in, is over 30. And Morgan and I are still uh, in top new zone. And you'll see your room on the right-hand side. Awesome. Pardon me, Dana. 
people who are here are the best. We, we started with over 200 applicants, and so we did down to six of us in Top Som and six in Top New Som. 361, right? 361. Okay, sweet. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Brown bags. Yeah, yeah, I knew you'd have something to say about my pants. How many batteries does come with, bud? One C battery per leg or what? Yep. Fred Dame is like the American Jedi master of blind tasting. He's been a master for over 30 years. He's sort of a figurehead. How are you, Fred? John. Yeah, John, how you doing? So we're going to have a, a little practice before. I thought I'd give you a little Fred Dame experience, all right? <laughs> we'll sit down and we'll talk about, about my philosophy of wine tasting. Okay. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Want to do this for money, or should we just do this for fun? <laughs> no. Any time you get to sit down with someone like Fred, who basically in invented this profession in America, uh, it's a real honor. Do you know why you never put your hands on a bowl of glass? Yeah, because then you can't see the clarity. Nope. So you're taking the masters? The, the oil in your hands is the greatest retainer of scent in the world. That's why it's a stem glass. Anything that you have touched previous to this, that smell immediately transfers to the glass. You're probably going to have to go to the bathroom before you go in and you use hand soap and that sort of thing. You know, then you don't ever want to put your hand on that bowl of that glass. Okay? Let's all put our nose in there. What do you think of the aromatics here? We're highly intense. Intense, yeah. tropical. And highly All kinds of cool stuff in there, isn't there? If I were to wait, you know, floral versus fruity in the wine, it's more on that sort of, you know, lilac. There's a lot of fruit there. Yeah. And what, what are the fruit descriptors since we're on that topic? Stone fruit, tropical, like orchard fruits. There's yeah. pretty much everything going on in there. Do you know what this is? I say Muscat. The first winner. We're already guessing? You're not guessing. You're a master's candidate for God's sake, man. <laughs> I and all the bitterness and the aromatics that go to reverse meter. Muscat's not going to be as bitter, I don't think. I agree. Well done. Fred is known for being an amazing taster. Tasting is also my biggest strength. I greatly, greatly respect Fred, so don't want to let him down. What's your biggest fear? Besides not passing. Do you think you're going to pass? Yes. Well? I fear not living up to the work that I've done over the last 11 and a half months. That'll be fair. Here's my advice to you, is that on the day that you sit down, you are a living God. You can do no wrong. You are perfect. For 25 minutes of your lifetime, you are perfect. And if you have the courage of conviction to go through that tasting with that philosophy, your chances of passing are greatly enhanced. Nerves were not always something that affected me, and it's really been in the past few competitions that it's something I've really struggled with. On the day you pass, it's one of the greatest days of your life. I mean, we call it walking on clouds. It's a very special moment. Now, on the other hand, in top song, there's first, second, and third. No? Who's gonna win? Me. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I think in order for Dana to seem confident he needs to talk but i think it's a sign of lack of confidence i won the chef's club competition and my goal is to keep the string going and win again most of all good luck guys huh thank you no chance. we're gonna have fun remember i'll be pointing for each and every one of you as i'm beating the holy bejesus out of you <laughs> brad way too many ties i was just like i can't pick one so all of them so you're always gonna have these two angel and devils sitting on either shoulder. One person saying, like, yeah, you can totally do this, and you're gonna have this other person saying, like, you're a piece of crap. It's about, it's more about quieting that voice down. I'm like a semi-late night, maybe a few more beers than I should have had. Feeling a little hungover, but that's fine. It's my birthday today. I have like 50 people posted on my Facebook page already. Another happy birthday. My first competition, there were no expectations at all. But my skills are at a different level. With that comes a different feeling of pressure. The stakes feel incredibly high. Okay, lock and load. Should we pour? Yeah. Kind of ready to go, right? Let me shut the door. 
the blind tasting competition, it's a mock master sommelier exam. We put out six wines, and the competitor has 25 minutes. We score the tasting a bit differently than we score the MS exam, but you still get a really good idea of where you're at. It's kind of like a math problem, so you have to show your work. You get part of your points for getting the wine right, and then you get part of your points for describing it right. Morgan, Fred, we have to take all of this sensory data from what we're looking at, what we're tasting, what we're smelling, and in real time, you have to sort of analyze all of that data and then use it to deduce what the wine is. The minute you touch that glass, we're going to start that timer. Okay. okay? Good luck. There are rules, and I think it's a good rule. Obviously, red wine with meat makes sense, and white wine with fish makes sense, of course. With the fish dish, you want something that is not going to overpower it. Really tannic red wine with fish is overpowering, and actually tannins in fish taste like metal. Where you're looking at a steak dish, it's rich, it's fatty. So these wines that have a darker fruit character, have more tannin, are able to stand up to that better. You can actually have red meat with the white wine sometimes, but the white wine has to have a good amount of acidity. Hermitage Blanc or something like that, something that has textures and that has oak on it. There are lots of red wines that are really nice with fish. Pinot Noir goes really well with fish. I think you should drink what you want with what you like. You want Malbec with ice with, like, a sardine? Great. I'll give you three of them. I want people to eat and drink what they like and have a great time. So I had a really great tasting at regionals, but it's traditionally not been my strongest discipline in the competitions. It would be great to just go out there and, and crush it. The minute you touch that glass, we're gonna start that timer. Okay? Good luck. Okay. All right, we're starting with wine number four. Uh, here we have a clear red wine of a moderate plus concentration of uh, dark ruby at the core, and slightly lighter uh, ruby meniscus. A little red and black cassis. There's an organic minerality of uh, some fresh tilled earth, sort of baking spice molasses, uh, indicating uh, some in well integrated use of, of new oak uh, on the palate. So just as a dry wine, it is it is moderate plus in acid. Tannins are moderate plus. Alcohol is moderate plus, and the wine's in balance. So I think this is a <clears throat> Merlot dominant blend from uh, the right bank of Bordeaux from the village of Saint Emilion uh, in the 2010 vintage. Wine is clean. Whew. Um, well, let's say it yeah, has a moderate plus intensity. Um, alcohol is high and the wine is in balance with a um, high complexity and a, a long finish. The bitterness is just really intensity, in, intense. Um, or like, yeah. This is um, 2012 uh, Pinot Gris from France from Alsace. And that is time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There's only so many wines that you can taste. If you don't drink and or serve a lot of something, it becomes more difficult to identify. It's like he doesn't listen to himself. Yeah. But there was, the stuff comes in good, and then... Right. right. Wine number one is a clear white wine. It is a strong color with hints of gold and green, consistent to a watery rim. There's no gas, there's no sediment. Color concentration is moderate plus. Alcohol is high, acid is moderate. It's not new oak dominant. Fresh but overripe fruit flavors of citrus oil, orange and lemon, papaya, slight tropical notes, banana, rose petal, white flowers, gardenia. Possible grapes include um, Viognier, Marsan, Roussan from France, um, Grunewaldiner from Austria, if I'm kind of warping the acid call. Uh, that to me is just. This is a uh, Viognier from the from France, from the Rhone Valley, the northern Rhone country of 2012. She describes that the wines really, really well, but unfortunately, Jane tends to take a few wrong turns at the conclusion. 
because I'm calling the fruit as dominant, I have to take this to the new world, although I think this is Sauvignon Blanc, could be new world or old world. Um, final conclusion, this is a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, from the South Island, Marlboro, 2014. 45 seconds left. I'm not gonna take it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jane. I honestly have no idea how it went. Like, I just haven't been tasting much lately, so I have no clue. And that's not a good place to be at. There were, there were a lot of points where she was this close to saying the right thing. I know, I know. You know I just, what are you gonna do? Wine number three is a clean, clear white wine of medium color concentration. I know the wine is sound clean, and then some ruby red grapefruit. There's uh, quite a bit of a grassiness, um, evidence of purizines here. No signs of time spent on oak. It's very youthful. It's an old world wine. This is Sauvignon Blanc from France. Um, I'm gonna call this a 2013 uh, Sancerre. Wine number six is a youthful wine, <clears throat> two to four years in age. I'm gonna call this uh, 2012 uh, Syrah from the northern one of France from Saint Joseph of uh, high quality. One minute left. <clears throat> it's definitely not what I said. There's much more red fruit on this wine. Let's go back a little bit on wine number five. Um, finding much more red fruit here. There's so much red in this top. They call it Grenache from France. Uh, I tried to move to pop. It's not right either. 20 seconds. Oh. I'm gonna stop now before I ruin anything else. Thank you. Well, he really flubbed up. Got wine, huh? Yeah, that killed him. He was in the hunt until then. He's gonna have a better service than Dana, likely. I mean, his service is sharp, so he could, depending yeah. on theory, those two are gonna be neck and neck. Let's do it. Okay. You ready? I am ready. If I'm gonna win, I have to crush tasting. Uh, we got a great tasting today. I'm glad to hear that. Very <laughs> exciting stuff. You gonna keep time? <sighs> start with wine number three. Um, wine number three is a clear white wine. And, um, um, it's a little bit of a green apple skin. <coughs> Dana looked either completely sick or incredibly hungover, and I was really not sure which. Stone minerality to it. Notes of white grapefruit, and sour gooseberry. Secondarily, it's uh, driven by pyrogenic notes. Green grass, no oak, barber body, high acidity. This is a one to three year old wine from the old world, from a cool climate. Final conclusion 2013, Sauvignon Blanc, France. Loire Valley, Central Vineyard, Sancerre. Wine number two is a clear white wine of moderate plus intensity. Green and yellow apple, apple skin, lemon juice. Secondarily, there's a radish, white pepper, no signs of oak. The wine's moderate in body, R plus acid. 2012, Grand Grand Prix or Austria, Bacau. He hit five of six of the wines, so natural, so fluid. Uh, he basically read us our grid on the page as we just sort of circled everything. 2005, Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc from France, from Bordeaux, from their left bank, from Margot. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> well done, sir. Thank you. Oh, good job. Dana was definitely the tasting of the day. Yeah, it was good. Don't tell him. I'm not going to tell him. <clears throat> I'm going to go eat. Because I have not eaten. What's up, Mr. Ross? It's like you did great. I was like, really, I know. 
never heard Craig say that. No. Except for after, like, something. Like, right. not the, not after the tasting, but, like, after the whole thing. Right. Which surprised me, so I was yeah. like, maybe I crushed it. OK, every candidate's going to come in for service. These rounds are going to be 15 minutes each. Start them when they come in and approach the table. Your job is to capture them for as much time as you can. We're going to have two tables that are competing against each other for the time of the sommelier. Time management is going to be of the essence. Good luck. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Good. How are you? Good Hello. Hello. How are you? So both tables are going to ask questions. This is going to really test their knowledge, and this happens in a real restaurant every day. I noticed that there was a Loire red flight. Now, those are all different uh, producers and different varieties? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you, you have to have as much acid in the wine as you do in the food, or else the, the, it, like the one, will cancel, one will cancel the other. You can stand at the table and be flustered and feel like you have to go and run, or you can stand there and let them talk and, and just wait patiently. Why does goat cheese go well Pretty, with some serif free from egg? Profile. Uh, goat cheese is definitely more of an acid-driven cheese, and I think you're seeing the same acid level in salsa. Did you want me to prepare a white and a red plate for you? Or? No, I, we're just going to have the glass, right? OK. Yeah, Excellent. Right away. Pass. We have Vacheron Sauvignon Blanc we can do, or it can do a different producer as well. I have oh. heard of the. Oh, very cool. Um, and then I'm going to show you a Muscadet as well. Um, let me get those for you. I will be right back. OK, great. Another table is very thirsty. Let's get some champagne there, brother. Do you definitely want to do champagne, or are you open to champagne? Champagne, champagne, champagne. Another yeah. champagne. Okay. He's a total champagne slut, this guy. Yeah, absolutely. I have a great wine I want you to try. What do you got? Have you ever heard of Beresh? Yeah. I have heard of Beresh. Oh, okay. How much is it? It's $100. $100. You find the these like these kind of out moments in a conversation where they feel satisfied and you need to be able to excuse yourself and get out of there. You want the bottle left on uh, the table here on ice, sir? We'll keep it on ice, sir. Yeah, on ice. In between each portion of service, they tell you to go face the wall. And after serving the wine at the second table, I figured I was done and just went and faced the wall. Oh. But there was another part to that exercise. Thank you. I totally blew it, though, on the Lower Valley table. Why? I didn't go back. After champagne, I literally <laughs> just went and stood against the wall. See, there was no, you had no bottle of conversation with that table. No. Hey. Why didn't I go back to that table? Remember, this is not the exam. Fun. This is fun. Morgan, you'll be to the two smaller tables. Right, Charlie. And Dana will send you over to the two perimeter tables. Two tables. Approach the tables. Good evening. How can I be of assistance today? You've got some interesting wine flights, including a flight of three Loire Valley Reds for $15 for the flight. So the uh, the first is a saint -Saint Rouge from Guy Saget. Lovely, fresh Pinot Noir, really pretty. A little less intense than, than Burgundy, a little boosted minerality. I don't know. I don't want reds. Do you like white and cheddar? Yeah, of course. Uh, Muscadet, Sir Lee, uh, Sir Red Man from uh, Pepier. Uh, started with something classic, a little bit of uh, Cabernet Franc. Uh, one of the classic grapes of the Loire Valley. <clears throat> do... Sorry, I'm sorry if I, if I if I just ask you. Um, so for the Cab Franc, yes. um, where is that from? That's the central portion of the Loire Valley, around the village of Chinon. Oh, yes, okay, yes. yeah, I think we're gonna go there on our surely. trip. Okay, no, no. Chinon. Fantastic. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna. Can I, can I get a full glass of the Chinon? Yeah, surely. I'll get that for you and for you, Miss. Well, I, actually, are we gonna are we gonna split that? Like, shouldn't we split that glass or no? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll split a glass of it for you then, okay? Superb. I'll be right, right back in just a moment. Okay, great. Gentlemen, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I, the table uh, needed a little bit of my attention. This is the most difficult service situation I will probably ever be in in my entire life. Great rush, so yeah, absolutely. Table, thank you. Actually, we wanted to ask you about the castles. I heard there's lots of castles. <laughs> well, how about I prepare the bottle, and then we can, we can talk about that while we're doing it. Or... Did you want to hear about the castles now? That would be great. Have you been to the Loire Valley? I have not yet. It's on my list for sure. Uh, Where have you been? 
Went to Burgundy, Champagne. Have you were in Burgundy and you didn't pop over to the War Valley? I did not. You know, I hear they have these fabulous castles over there. The, like, I hear lovely, the lovely things, yes. Are you into architecture? I am. Can you give me one moment? I have to say hello to another table and I'll talk all about castles and architecture sure. we're doing in just a moment. Thank you for your patience. I need to open up when I'm on the floor, and it's more about charm and, and presence than anything else. Good evening, Morris. Come to Lucien. Sorry for the delay. You know um, That's OK. And we're just going to just go straight for some champagne. Give us a few recommendations of, of course, some things of that course. Similar. Yeah. Something like the Gosset Brut Excellence. And then uh, maybe go with Saint-Chamon. He's an Epernay. Three versus Brut in, in Chewy. Okay. Great. I'll we'll be Thank back you. with that in a moment. So, He's not going to serve his bottle. I was working on being more charming, and then it's actually become a fault. Did, and did anyone finish the, the two tables, pouring the, the oh, bottle no, at the table? I did. I ran out of time as I was about to pour it. The hottest wine regions these days are probably Jura in France. Canavat is one of the hottest producers in the show right now. For me, um, the most exciting place is on the Finger Lake. There's this depth of fruit, but there's a lot of restraint all at the same time. The wines are delicious, particularly Riesling. In the world of Italy, Etna is so hot right now. These wines are kind of salty and medium in body. Etna, you'll start to hear more and more and more about it. I'm still highly speculative about what this theory thing is going to be. Yeah. But it's only 15 minutes. How bad can it be? Right. I mean, you could literally get zero points. <laughs> 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 Theory is difficult because it's everything. It's geology, it's geography, it's history. It's a boggling amount of information to remember. All right, Jane, we're ready for you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh. We're going to have a little fun do theory a bit differently this year. Okay. We've often done the theory portion of the top psalm in a written format, but we wanted to give them an opportunity to answer the questions orally. So you're a wine director in a restaurant. Okay. You have four sommeliers who are working on the floor with okay. you. Uh, and they're going to ask you some questions, kind of test your theory. When somebody asks you a question on the fly, it's a little extra challenge and more similar to what they're actually going to see in the MS exam. I have a few quick questions for you. Um, one of our guests is looking for a vintage Calvados and wants something pear dominant. What would you suggest? Uh, Le Morton Dom Frontai. Any particular vintage that you would recommend? We have the 1996. Fabulous. We have some guests in one of our tables, um, and they love Austrian wine. OK. And she wants to know which one is most likely to have botrytis. So I would say Hertzberger in terms of that. You're going to get the most botrytis from okay. those wines. I think she wants a single vineyard wine. And so which one should I suggest? It's, um, I can't remember the name of, of their single vineyards. Thank you, Jay. That's all the questions. All right. There were questions I knew the answer to and thought of the answer the second I left the room. And just standing there, just couldn't, couldn't recall. OK. You can stand right here. How can I help, guys? Our sixth top is interested in Barolo. They want to do a comparison of single crew wines from La Mora. Well, we could do uh, Renate from Borzo, uh, Bovia, Rocca Patine, Maria Bona. We could do their Terecchio. Between the Hertzberger that we have on the list mm -hmm. and the Prager mm -hmm. and the Vader Malberg, mm -hmm. right, which one is most likely to have botrytis? Uh, Hertzberger, for sure. And this person's interested in single vineyard wines. Mm -hmm. Hertzberger Axe Point. I have another customer who's looking at Bordeaux. Okay. And specifically, he's looking at uh, Saint Emilion. <coughs> okay. They want one that has more Merlot than Cabernet Franc in the blend. Um, so Pavi, for sure. And then just one more, and then I'll get out of your hair. And uh, Angelus. No, I mean, just one more oh, question. Well, I have another guess, you know. <laughs> Got you. Morgan was really impressive today. I think our sommelier team is impressed. Good job. <laughs> Theory felt really good. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, how you doing? Good, how are you? Come on in. Oh, you get to stand right here. 
<laughs> so we have all 10 Beaujolais crews on the wine list. This customer wants to drink a really light crew. Which two wines should I recommend? Um, you know, I, I'd recommend Shrewblaze. It's also the highest altitude. And so I would go Shrewblaze or Fleury. Table 33, the guest wants to know how many bottles of wine a single grapevine produces. I mean, if you think about it, how many bunches would you see on a typical grapevine? You know, six, eight, maybe 10 different bunches. If you were to physically squeeze them, how much liquid you actually get out of them? And say anywhere from, from one to five bottles. I'm feeling pretty bummed about the overall competition. I don't think I'm going to win. These four sommeliers are going to be asking you some questions. OK, how are you? Tonight, one of our guests wants to try one of our vintage Calvados, but he wants one made mostly from pears. That would be from Don Fontes. Thank you. I want to talk to them about the Kubler that we have on the list. Where is it from again? Which one? Kubler. Kubler, Kubler I believe, is from Denmark. Our six top is interested in Barolo and wants to do a comparison of single crew wines from La Mora. Are there three specific wines on our list from different producers? Let's see. Um, hmm. Why am I blinking right now? Um, hmm. My brain's not functioning, unfortunately, for this question. Sorry. No worries. I think I, I blanked a little more than I would have if I was just sitting at a table with the two masters in front of me instead of a, a whole, like, firing squad. All right. That's all our questions from our sommeliers. OK. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Damn it. I don't feel good about that. <sighs> we'll start with the theory on Top New Psalm. We had two people that absolutely crushed it. it were Morgan and Martin Sheehan Strauss. We had Morgan. I thought he was amazing. Theory was his thing. And then looking at the tasting, Jane did not taste well. You know what, though? She was one of the most effective in terms of describing the wines. and yeah. But at some point, she'd just take the wrong turn. The service side, we had Jane do really well. The best I've ever seen her. And she was, I even told her, I said, that, that was a great performance. So let's move on to Top Tom. I thought Dana should have done better in theory. We were both a little surprised that he didn't score better. Yeah. But Dana had by far the best tasting. His tasting was one of the best I have ever seen in my entire career. And then below that was John Ross. So John Ross had a good tasting. It just wasn't as good as Dana's. But um, John Ross absolutely killed service. Everything that we asked him, he was so prepared to answer. So we're going to move over, have a little dinner, a little party, and we'll tell him who won. Yep. All right. So I'd like to invite the Top New Psalm candidates to come stand right here. For Top New Psalm, which is for sommeliers under 30, we have one winner. And for the Top Psalm designation, we announce a first and a second place. Six of you should be very proud of your performances, and you had some epic ones. But in the end, uh, as the Highlanders said, there can only be one. Um, the winner of Top New Psalm, Martin Sheehan Strauss. <laughs> the master exam around the corner, it's just kind of depressing to think that you might have spent like an enormous amount of your year working on this thing that you're not quite there yet for. I don't think I had the intensity and the focus today to win. I'm not where I need to be, and I knew that. So we want to uh, bring up the six competitors for the top sum category. Today, our runner-up, who gets a $1,000 scholarship, had clearly the best tasting. That is Mr. Dana Gazer from New York City. Second at Top Sum Nationals is pretty strong. I'm not disappointed by any means. Everyone did a great job. 
but one person showed themselves and their skills at a higher level, and that's this year's winner, John Ross. You all kicked my ass, honestly. I did not feel that great, but this is unreal. Thank you, everyone, to who invest their time and energy and soul into helping us become better and stronger. Thank you guys for being here, making me better. Who are you out of something crazy tomorrow. All right. <laughs> I mean, you stopped it. This guy reminds me of me. Me. <laughs> Thank you. That's in this. That's one of the best compliments I've ever received in this business. I'm a brilliant sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Fred's comments probably actually meant more to me than coming in second. I mean, it tells me that I'm I'm there. I'm ready. Your service was really good. I heard from others that it was like the strongest service that they'd seen you do. My tasting was not very good. The tasting wasn't that great. But... I got four to six bridles. I just put okay. them in the wrong place. Okay. You guys are both gonna pass this exam. There's no question. You know what you need to do? Thank you. Both of you. Cheers. Cheers. The Masters is close. For most of us, this profession defines us. It goes way beyond job performance. It's really kind of a reflection of who we are. We will never be new sommeliers again. You are putting yourself on the chopping block. You're putting yourself there on the table and saying, validate me. Everybody in every field has that fear. Maybe I'm just not great at this. But you really are staring it down the barrel when you go sit in the MS. Passing the master exam probably be the biggest personal slash professional achievement of my life. To be able to pass the masters, it's a very big deal. I will be shaken if I like go in there and like the first two questions, the three questions, I don't know. I'm going to Atlanta with John and Josh to take the theory portion of the masters. If I don't pass, it will be an incredible letdown. All of the waiting and the anxiety is over. The time is now. I only made a couple of stupid mistakes. You didn't get that? Oh, that's cool, man. It's excruciating to wait for the results. It was hard. It was very hard. Whoa, what? It was like a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs>